What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be comparing all-in-one zooms for micro four-thirds cameras. This is definitely something that I've never done before. Now the reason why I've never done a review like this before is because I never shoot with all-in-one zoom lenses. Both of these lenses kind of zoom throughout the entire range. These are 14 to 150 and 14 to 140. And uh, these are equivalent to around 28 to 300 millimeters on a full frame camera. So you can see it kind of covers the entire zoom range. Now when it comes to still pictures, I'm not going to be using a lens like this because they're not very fast. They don't get that super shallow depth of field that I love in my still images, but now that we've started shooting video with the GH5 and the GH5S, I find myself using these lenses all the time. Even though I've got some other lenses that are much sharper and much more beautiful, it's really nice to use these things handheld because you can have one camera on you at all times that can basically do it all. So let's first talk about the lens that I personally own. I actually own two of these lenses and that is the Panasonic 14 to 140 3.5 to 5.6. I absolutely love this lens because it's so small. I can basically keep it in my pocket. I just have it with me at all times when we're filming and uh, I can shoot anything I need to with it. And the stabilization with the camera and the lens combined is awesome. I can shoot this thing handheld and I rarely ever need a tripod. Let's talk about the competitor here. Tamron recently sent over their 14 to 150 millimeter, and this is 3.5 to 5.8. So it's slightly further at the long end. This one goes all the way to a 300 millimeter equivalent, whereas this lens can go only to 280 millimeter equivalent. Now on paper, the biggest difference between these two lenses is that this lens by Panasonic comes with stabilization in the lens, and the Tamron lens does not. Now let's quickly talk about the price of these lenses as well. Like I said, I own two of the Panasonic version of this lens, and I think I spent $700 for each of these lenses. Today, these lenses have dropped to just $500 each. The Tamron version is $400. So you're basically saving $100, but you're losing the optical stabilization in the lens. Later in this review, we're gonna talk about whether that's worth it or not for you. Now let's talk about build quality. I have to say when I first got these lenses by Panasonic, I was kind of surprised by how small they were and uh, they're not super well built. The outside casing is metal, but the actual uh, zooming element inside here is plastic and it feels like plastic. But I will say that the feel of this lens and the way that it actually zooms and this focus ring feels fantastic. It feels much better than the other lenses that we have for our Nikon gear. So although the lens itself feels kind of cheap just because it's so small and light, the way that it works feels great. The Tamron lens is slightly larger, but it's not a significant difference. And it also has a metal casing around the outside. But when you actually zoom with the lens, you'll notice that it's plastic here, which is kind of a bummer as well. So in terms of the actual design, I would say it's pretty similar. But when I actually feel the way this thing zooms and the way the focus ring works, it's very clear to me that I prefer the way the Panasonic lens works over the Tamron. Now, when we first got the Tamron lens, we went out to our trusty brick wall and we shot at the widest angle, a medium angle, and then all the way zoomed in on both of these lenses. And I wish that I could tell you that one lens outperformed the other and it's such a clear end result but of course that's never the case. In our test, it seemed like the Panasonic lens was sharper in the middle, but in almost every case, at every zoom range, the Tamron lens was sharper on the edges. Now, take a look at these shots. You'll notice that the Tamron has a little bit more chromatic aberration. And then when we zoom all the way in, the Tamron suffers from much more vignetting than the Panasonic does. One other thing that we noticed is when both lenses are zoomed all of the way out, the Panasonic lens is slightly wider than the Tamron. All of this stuff is so insignificant, especially when you're shooting video, but if you forced me to choose a lens and said, which one has the best image quality, maybe I would lean a little bit towards the Panasonic, but it's really pretty even. Now let's talk about image stabilization. This is huge for videographers, especially if you're going to be using the camera handheld. When I was shooting with DSLRs, I had to shoot on tripods exclusively. And then when I bought the GH5, it kind of opened my eyes to what's possible. 
Now I can just bring a camera with me and I can shoot movie quality shots without a tripod or any sort of stabilization at all. One thing that makes the stabilization in this camera so impressive is that if you buy the right lens, you can combine the stabilization of the sensor and the optical stabilization of the lens and both of them work together to create dual image stabilization. I've been specifically buying brand new Panasonic lenses just for this feature because I wanna have as stable of footage as possible when I'm hand holding the camera. So I assumed when I compared both of these lenses handheld, there would be a significant difference between the two in terms of how steady the footage could be. But to my surprise, dual IS may not be as valuable as I actually thought. The Tamron lens does communicate with the camera. You don't have to plug anything in. It just works right out of the gate. And the sensor inside the GH5 will move around and stabilize the footage. And it looks almost identical to the footage that we got with the Panasonic version, which is supposed to have the dual stabilization in the lens and in the body. This was a huge shock to me. I thought this was going to be the reason by itself that you should spend the extra money and get the Panasonic version. But I have to say, looking at this footage side by side, there's really not a big difference. And so if you're shooting with the GH5 and you wanna save a hundred bucks, you may not need a lens with stabilization at all. Now, all of this changes if you're shooting with another micro four thirds camera that doesn't have internal stabilization. Now, when we're shooting on the GH5S, you can see a huge difference in these two lenses. The Panasonic version of this lens has optical stabilization. It's doing a pretty good job of keeping everything nice and smooth, but you can see the Tamron version doesn't have any stabilization at all. And this becomes completely unusable if you're going to try to use it handheld. So I think the bottom line with stabilization is if you're shooting with the GH5, which has stabilization built into the sensor itself, you may not need to spend the extra money on a lens that can communicate with the camera and have that dual image stabilization. But if you're shooting with another camera like the GH5S, which doesn't have internal stabilization, having it built into the lens is a must. Now, one weird thing that I noticed when I was testing both of these lenses is that when you zoom the Tamron lens, it does some crazy stuff with the focusing. It's like out of focus, then kind of into focus, and then back out of focus. And then refocusing is significantly slower with the Tamron versus the Panasonic. Now, I'm not the type of shooter who's going to be zooming while I'm actually filming, but if you find yourself zooming a lot while you actually are getting shots, there's absolutely no comparison here. You're definitely gonna wanna go with the Panasonic version. So in conclusion, which lens would I recommend? I've gotta say, stick with the Panasonic lens. The Tamron lens is great, especially for the $100 savings you're going to get. But when it comes to the weird way that it acts when you actually zoom and the focusing being a little bit slower, and the fact that it doesn't have any stabilization that can work on cameras that aren't stabilized like the GH5S, I think it's worth the extra 100 bucks. Now, if the Panasonic lens was still $700, this would be a little bit more of a discussion. But being that this lens is only $500 and the Tamron is just $100 cheaper, spend the money, it's just $100, I think you're going to really appreciate this lens. For more content just like this, head over to fstoppers.com and if you'd like to check out our full-length photography tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.